Hey folks, welcome back to our channel. If you're like me and you did that super annoying thing where you stripped one of the terminals on your lithium ion phosphate prismatic cells, then don't stress too much about it. It is salvageable and I'm going to show you how in this video. I started off by dismantling my battery. So I like to compress my lithium ion phosphate prismatic cells and I do it just with some thread bar and some plywood. And as you can see here, there's the offending terminal that has stripped so the first thing I did was to measure how deep the hole was. I think it came out at around 7 mils, so yeah, 7.2 mils at the bottom of that. And the reason that's important is that you need to know how deep you're going to drill at your hole out to be able to tap a new thread in. You don't want to be going past the bottom of that terminal uh, because obviously if you do, then you get into the battery and into the chemistry and stuff inside there. I then measured the battery cell to see how high it was and how much clearance I had uh, so that when I went to my drill press I could make sure that I had enough clearance the drill bit was actually too long for it and so I landed up putting it into the vise to cut it I had originally planned to do this anyway because the drill bits are tapered at the end and I didn't want to be drilling it as close to the bottom of the the barrel or the hole in the terminal as I could and have the tapered bit hitting the bottom. I wanted to drill out as square a hole as possible. So I just cut the drill bit completely flat like that, uh, which worked fine because all I was doing is removing metal from the side of the barrel or the side of the hole inside the terminal. I wasn't actually digging a new hole, if that makes sense. So I didn't need to be able to cut from the center of the hole. I was just cleaning out from the outside of the hole. So I just tidied it up on my bench grinder and got it ready to be able to drill out the hole that has been cross-threaded. I then marked the drill bit. Uh, I think I marked it around five millimeters or five and a half mils. Um, so essentially, or I think it was actually about six mils. So um, I wanted to make sure that I had enough space that I wasn't going to go through the bottom of the hole in the terminal, uh, but that it was still deep enough to get good contact with the grub screw and the heli coil that I was going to land up putting in. So I just put some green tape on there to mark off where I needed to stop. This would have been a better process to do with somebody spotting for you just to help to make sure that you don't go too deep and all that sort of stuff. But I didn't have anyone with me. So I landed up just doing it by myself. But uh, I, I actually bought this drill press specifically for this job. I've wanted one for a while and I didn't have one in my workshop. But when this happened, I decided I would not try and drill this out by hand because I think that would just be a pain and, and just be a nightmare, especially on your own, uh, not being able to spot and see how deep you're going and not having the precision that you have with the drill press. Uh, so I just drilled it really slowly and carefully. As you can see there, the metal shavings coming out, drilled it fine, made sure that once I hit the level of that tape, I stopped and uh, double checked everything and it was actually went smoothly and no problems. Um, didn't go too deep, pretty much to the level that I wanted to inside that hole. Um, the bottom of that hole is slightly uh, curved anyway, so I pretty much drilled to the top of the start of that curve. Um, I think I realized at this point that it wasn't quite deep enough, so I went back for round two, put it in a bit further, uh, probably because I had just marked off with the tape probably a little bit too soon. Um, and not deep enough with the tape, but that's right. I'd rather be safe than sorry. I'd rather be a bit more cautious um, when it comes to drilling these things out. Uh, so just blowing all the metal shavings out to have a look at it. And I think at this point, everything looked good. I then got ready to put the actual tap in uh, to put a new thread. So originally I had planned that I was going to take the drill bit out of the drill and put the tap into the drill as you can see here, to be able to hand start the process of tapping the new thread. Um, and in theory, this sounded like a great idea, but in practice, it didn't actually work because of the the elasticity of the springs on the drill press. So you'll see here, I start pressing it there. I tried turning it by hand, didn't work. So I then picked up the chuck key to lever that and I kind of started the thread like this. It was going relatively smoothly, but it was just difficult to control it properly. Um, the terminal started moving there because I didn't have enough hands to hold it. So I just shifted it all the way around until it stopped. So just leave it against the pillar. 
Um, and as you can see, just turning that chuck like that, uh, it's, it was quite difficult to control the downward force in the, at the same time as the chuck actually pulling it down because the naturally the drill press is pulling it back up the pillar rather than pushing it down. So just the, the force has just seemed weird. I needed two hands at this point and then as you can see here, I could just hit that point and the spring just locks it and pulls everything out. Um, and so I was a little bit nervous that it was going to damage the new thread that I had started there, but it actually turned out okay, it wasn't too bad. And at this point I decided that I would scrap that plan and I would just take my chances with tapping it completely by hand, just freestyling it. <laughs> um, and I mean, the reason why I didn't want to do this in the first place is just because I, on my own, didn't have a spotter to help me get it in straight. Um, so as you can see here, starting, it looks a bit sketchy. It's at quite a bad angle, um, but I just didn't realize that at the time. Kind of straightens out a little bit here. That leverage when you're pulling it around the side there doesn't look great, um, but it's, I just went carefully, I went in a little way with it like this, um, kind of backing out every now and then, sort of um, as the as the as it got difficult to turn, or just back on the thread, kind of clear the, the metal shavings back a little bit. Um, at this point I decided that I would stop, I think I'd pretty much reached the bottom of the hole at that point because these taps are similar to a drill bit where they kind of taper and the threading on the tap starts very fine. And um, I decided that I would grind it down until I got to like good thread uh, straight away so that I wasn't um, kind of having a, a really uh, narrow thread towards the bottom of the hole inside the terminal just because I didn't have a lot of space to play with. So I just ground the tap all the way down until I got to that point where the thread was good and strong um, and then I could carry on cutting the thread into the terminal. I did the same as I had done previously with the drill bit where I just marked it off at around six mils or thereabouts just so I had a, re had a reference uh, of where to stop uh, in going into the cell. Um, so I just put some green tape on there again and it was pretty handy doing this. I mean, the reality is, is that with the with this tap, it actually uh, it pretty much hit the bottom and wouldn't go anymore. Um, so it wasn't that risky of pushing out the bottom of the hole in the terminal, but I just wanted it there as a bit of a safety net also just to check and, and just to know kind of how deep I was in the hole as well, because that's important um, just to know when to stop so that you have enough uh, thread in there for your helicoil. Um, so just turn this uh, around here, kind of backing. Uh, whenever it got pretty stiff, I'll just back up sort of half, a quarter of a turn or, or thereabouts just to clear some of the metal shavings. I sped this up uh, in the edit just because it got quite long winded, but yeah, you can see didn't quite get the angle right. It wasn't perfectly straight. As you can see, there's a couple of times where it really leans over and I kind of pull it back. And that's not ideal when you're tapping a new hole like this just because it kind of weakens the thread and it doesn't get it straight and doesn't, doesn't create a, a, a perfect thread. Um, but this is quite difficult metal to tap anyway, just because it's so soft. Uh, and yeah, it would have been helpful to, to be able to spot it, but I kind of did the best that I could uh, in the circumstances and I needed to get it done. I pretty much got the tap all the way to the bottom of the hole and then backed it all the way out and was relatively happy with the results. Um, the threads on these terminals generally are not great. Uh, they're pretty average. Uh, it doesn't show it very well there, but the, that was kind of me trying to show you the thread. Um, and it looked all right. Uh, I was reasonably satisfied, as I mentioned. They are generally quite weak threads in these because it is just aluminium. Um, so got the helicoil ready there after I cleaned it out and started to put that into the hole. It went in relatively smoothly. Um, 
took pretty well to the new thread that I had cut and I pushed it in basically as far as it could go and obviously with the physics of how these helicoils work as the more you tighten the, it kind of uh, compresses in on itself like a spring essentially as you're tightening just because of the way that it's coiled around like that and then when you release the pressure it kind of then goes back on itself to fill the thread and the hole and stuff like that. Um, the only thing I didn't like about this is that I probably could have drilled it just a touch deeper because um, the helicoil was around five and a half millimeters uh, in, in uh, depth and when I put this in it was sticking out by about a millimeter so I pretty much had only about four mils of a helicoil in there um, which is not ideal you can't really torque uh, your terminal on that much um uh on that little bit of thread uh but yeah it, it kind of it is what it is um and so i put tried putting the grub screw in there that i'm going to be using and was happy with how it felt i then cut down the heli coil a little bit so that i had a flush surface on the top of the terminal because that's going to be super important when it comes to actually putting the bus bars on there or terminals from a uh, load uh, wire in a van um, then just tighten the heli coil in as much as I could to the bottom of that hole uh, which I was pretty happy with how that went I then picked up a diamond file and just filed the top of the terminal so obviously at this point the Helicoil was flush with the top of the terminal, changed uh, grades of the diamond file just uh, to get something a little bit rougher to smooth it down a bit. And then I think we went back to the red one after this um, just to get a nice smooth finish. And uh, this is important because sometimes you get oxidation on the top of the terminals, uh, which can then cause resistance. You don't get as good of a connection with your lead uh, as, as, if you, as if you didn't clean it off like this. Um, and so it just removes that resistance and then has a better connection and uh, that just improves the performance of your battery you don't get voltage drop and stuff like that um, so yeah i just cleaned it off and then i was pretty satisfied with it um, even though it's a small bit of thread that the grub screw will hold on to um, i think it's strong enough i pretty much wouldn't be able to torque it uh, any more than the aluminium would hold anyway so yeah i hope it's been helpful and uh, if it has, then I'd love you to subscribe. We'll put out this sort of content more in the future. But yeah, thanks for watching.